morning good morning welcome to our sunday morning worship service at living hope church we are so thankful and blessed to worship with you in person and online and if you are watching with us online we just want to welcome you um this morning we have just a few announcements um we um, we are going to be doing an outreach again this year for the teachers in Mora. And if you would like to partner with us, we invite you to give online. Um, there is a way that you can um, go on push pay or you can give in person. Um, and what we're going to be doing is offering every teacher in our school district a free lunch. So we just want to give back. And as some of you may know that our schools have gone to distance learning and um, just as a, a way to encourage our teachers and staff that we just really appreciate them and are praying for them um, during this time. So we invite you to um, to participate in that, and you can do that on push pay or in person here. Um, and we have a couple of opportunities for ministry this week. This um, coming up is Hope for the Holidays on two, um, Wednesday at 6.30 here at the church, and it will also be online. You can find it on Facebook, live streamed. Um, just that empty chair principle that once in a while, uh, as we're celebrating the holidays, we may just have that that grief kind of hit and um, it's just a way to prepare your heart for the holidays and really find your hope in Christ and so if you know anybody that may be walking through grief whether it's a loss of a of a relationship of any kind a spouse a family member a job um, this is just an opportunity to come and um, just receive extra hope and then uh, we also have our online giving. So if you um, look up on the slide there, there's a way that you can text Mora Hope to 77977. You can give in the uh, offering boxes at the outside of the sanctuary, or you can do it online on um, our website, livinghopechurchmora.com. So we also have um, an opportunity if you'd like to join us in prayer on Tuesday, November 24th, I believe it is, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We're going to be meeting outside, um, and we're going to be doing a prayer candlelight service outside. So dress warm. Um, 5.15, we're going to meet out by the cross and just have an opportunity to pray, show gratitude to God for all that he's done, and um, and just to pray for our nation and uh, just have a time of celebrating um, how grateful we are. So I'm going to read um, from Psalm 103. And I just wanted to, to read this in the Passion Translation. Um, Psalm 103, as we think about all the things that we have to be grateful for and just how good God is, this is really one that... Um, that I've been thinking about and um, wanted to read this in this version as we prepare our hearts for today's service. Um, so the words may sound a little different than what you're used to, but uh, with my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God, Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You've kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. You've unveiled to Moses your plans and showed Israel's sons what you could do. Lord, you're so kind and tender-hearted to those who don't deserve it and so patient with people who fail you. Your love is like a flooding river, overflowing its banks with kindness. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so you can hold a grudge against us. You may discipline us for our sins, but never as much as we really deserve. 
nor do you get even with us for what we've done. Higher than the heavens, higher than the highest heavens, that's how high your tender mercy extends. Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of your loyal love, towering over all who fear you and bow down before you. Farther than from a sunrise to a sunset, that's how far you've removed our guilt from us. The same way a loving father feels toward his children, that's but a sample of your tender feelings toward us, your beloved children who live in awe of you. You know all about us, inside and out. You are mindful that we are made from dust. Our days are so few and our momentary beauty so swiftly fades away. Then all of a sudden we're gone, like grass clippings blown away in a gust of wind, taken away to our appointment with death, leaving nothing to show but we are that we were here. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken and unrelenting toward those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe before you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise you've made passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. You are faithful to all those who follow your ways and keep your word. God's heavenly throne is eternal, secure, and strong, and his sovereignty rules the entire universe. So bless the Lord, all his messengers of power, for you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of his word to do it. Bless and praise the Lord, you mighty warriors, ministers who serve him well and fulfill his desires. I will bless and praise the Lord with my whole heart. Let all his works throughout the earth, whatever his dominion, wherever his dominion stretches, let everything bless the Lord. Amen? Amen. We give you praise, God, for who you are. We have nothing but gratitude and praise for our love for you and for your love for us. We thank you for your faithfulness and the many, many promises in your word that you always fulfill. God, you are so worthy of praise and honor and glory, and we lift our eyes up to you, and we thank you that we can worship you freely, and we can love you with our whole heart, and know that we will be loved fully and completely and be forgiven. God, we thank you for your forgiveness, for your faithfulness to us, and for your great love to all that you have made. God, we give you glory this morning, and we just invite your presence here with us, that you would um, just bless us with your presence. God, as we lift our eyes to you, that we would encounter um, encounter who you are today. God, we thank you for each person that you have brought to the service and to the online. And Lord, we pray that you would minister to each one in a powerful and mighty way today. God, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, Lord, for every promise. And we thank you that it will be sealed to our hearts today. God, we just ask that you would um, just fill this time with your glory and that you would be exalted in this place in Jesus name amen thank you ginger let's just take a moment before we jump into the word today we are the worship our abby was our worship leader today and she called that she's not feeling well and didn't want to make us exposed to sickness but i'm just gonna pray for her and and um, there's so many people each each day throughout the week that call and they need prayer i tell you what um with what's happening in our world right now there's a demand uh people that need healing there's a demand for people that that need christ there's a lot happening in our world and and what's what it's creating is opportunities for prayer and for ministry so father we come to you 
Father, I lift up Abby right now. Jesus, I pray that you bring healing to her body, bring healing to her voice. Father, I also lift up everyone. Lord, we know that in this last week, Lord, I got friends that are doctors and nurses and hearing their reports of they're working 12 hour, twelve plus hours a day and they're telling me on boots on the ground there's not enough beds and there's there's stuff happening but lord we ask for lord we we want a move of healing in this in this city we need a move of healing in this region to to lift up the plague and pestilence of COVID-19. God, in Jesus' name, Father, we know we are in a season now in Minnesota where flu season's in play. And all these things, God, we ask that you uh, would just, uh, with your mighty hand and outstretched arm, to stretch out uh, across our city, bringing healing and deliverance to those that are under any disease or sickness. Father, your word says you're the son of righteousness that rises with healing in your wings. Father, rise up over this region. Rise up over homes. Rise up over the hospitals and just radiate your glory. Radiate your presence down upon every person that is in a hospital bed and release healing to their mortal body. Father, we pray that you raise them up with resurrection, life, and power in Jesus' name. Father, we just ask that you just would sweep across this land with a healing revival in Jesus' name. Father, we know that your blood cancels the curse. Your blood cancels sickness. So, Father, we just ask that the blood of Jesus would just cover our state, cover our city and our region right now. Cover those that are under that are on the bed of illnesses, sickness. Lord, your word says in Psalms that you raise those people up out of their bed of sickness. So, Father, start raising people out of these beds of sickness in Jesus' name. Father, just release healing right now, Lord. Just stretch out your hand. Perform miraculous signs and wonders and miracles for your people at this time. Father, we pray for recovery. God, we pray for restoration in Jesus' name. We pray for testimonies of healing that can be released that would release hope and faith in the atmosphere. So, Father, touch those right now in Jesus' name that need a special touch today. Even those watching online, Father, there may be those at home right now that are feeling ill or sick. Father, stretch out your hand where they're sitting or where they're lying down, God, and just release healing. Father, there may be those watching online that are actually in a hospital watching. So, Lord, release healing to them in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says you're the Lord God that heals us. So, Father, we declare you're the Lord God that heals us today. Heal those that are sick. Heal those that are ill in Jesus' name. Raise them up with a fast, full, speedy recovery in Jesus' name. If you have your prayer language, let's just take a moment. Pray in the spirit because we need our nation right now is, is at a crossroads. And we're going to talk about this today. We're going to go a little deeper in last week's message, but we need to take a moment to lean in. There's a lot of churches. There's a lot of pastors across this nation that, for whatever reason, they're not leaning into the moment. They're, they're not addressing the moment. They're not praying into the moment. They're, it's almost like they're standing by as bystanders, watching and observing things, but not doing anything. So we need to pray. We need to pray that God wakes up our nation, wakes up the church, and wakes up believers and leaders, especially those in, in, in parts of the country that are that are that are in that are literally in suffering, that are in lockdown. I mean, Minnesota, we had it hard here, but there's other parts of the nation where it's very difficult. And, and it's easy for the enemy to bring a spirit of discouragement over his church, a spirit of discouragement over spiritual leaders, and a spirit, a spirit of discouragement over the church to the point where they don't respond, they don't, they don't speak up, they don't speak out, they don't stand up. Instead, we need to pray that God would raise up the voice, to raise up the voice of believers across this nation. So, Father, we come to your presence. Father, we know that right now the only thing we have is our voice. And Father, Lord, there's not much we can do, especially in more of Minnesota. But we do know what your word says. Your word commands us to be watchful and prayerful in these last days. Father, your word makes it clear to us that we're supposed to lift up holy hands in prayer and intercession for those in authority. 
Your word makes it clear in Thessalonians that we ought to pray continually. Father, your word makes it clear that when the righteous cry out, you hear us and you deliver us from all of our troubles. Well, Father, right now we know what we can do in this moment where our nation seems to be on a teeter-totter. Lord, we could cry out to you. Father, we could look to you because our help comes from you today. So, Father, as a church in Mora, Minnesota, Father, we just want to align our hearts with other believers across this nation that are praying, that are believing, that are standing firm. Father, we ask that you would remove the discouragement that's trying to come upon people in your church at this time. Whether it's in Minnesota or in other parts of the country where the persecution and the suffering is real. Father, we ask that you would replace the discouragement and replace it with the spirit of peace upon your people. Father, raise up voices, God, in Washington. Raise up voices across the nation to speak up, to stand up. Father, just like, Lord, you prophesied during this time that you're raising up Esthers and you're placing Esthers in positions of leadership. Father, I pray those that are in those places of authority, those that are in those places of leadership, Father, I pray that you anoint their voice, give them favor, give them influence, with decision makers so that righteousness and justice can be served to our nation at this time. Father, I pray for our leaders that you give them a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That you give them boldness. That you give them courage to stand for truth. Give them courage to stand for righteousness and justice. Father, our prayer today is, God, you're the God of justice. You're the God of mercy. Father, will you, with your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, Father, as a God of justice, expose the wicked acts and the wicked deeds of unrighteousness in our land. Father, we're asking you to expose what needs to be exposed. Bring to light what needs to be brought to light. Father, bring the truth to the surface so everyone in this nation could see the truth for what the truth is without deception, without lies, without distortion. Father, we ask you as a God of justice to bring justice to the injustice and expose the truth so every man, woman, and child would see the truth for what the truth is. Father, we can't do that, but we believe you can. We believe that you can expose things. You can bring darkness into light. You can call out sinfulness, and you can call out deception because you're the king who sits on the throne. Father, your word says in Psalms 2, 4, the one who is in, sits in throat laughs. Father, I believe right now you are laughing at the enemy. And you are laughing at what he's trying to do because you know what the end of the book says. You know that one day you're coming back and you're going to tie him up and throw him to the lake of fire forever. So, Lord, I know your, your word says you're, you're laughing on the throne because you know that what we're, what we're the enemy is going to end up in the future. And you know that there's things happening right now in our nation. But, Lord, you, you have a joy. You have a joy. You have a smile on this nation. And you know at the time when you're going to bring justice and when you're going to bring mercy Father, we're asking you today to bring justice and mercy to this land. Father, we're asking for healing. Father, we know that we've, as a nation, as we stand in the gap, there's things we've done that are wrong in your eyes. And Father, there are things that we do deserve judgment for as a nation. But today we're asking you for mercy. We're asking for you, just like you did in your word at times, you would relent. And you would show mercy rather than judgment to nations that turn their heart back to you, even if there's a remnant. Father, I believe, God, there's a remnant that's crying out to you today, looking to you, because, Lord, we don't know what to do right now, but we can look to you, and we can trust in the promises of your word. And we have a voice that could cry out to you, and we know that you're hearing our prayers. We know that you're recording them, and one day we believe you're going to answer those prayers. Father, we look to you today. 
we look to you. We're asking you that you would send the power of your Holy Spirit to help us to stand strong in these days. Father, send the power of your Spirit to help us to be faithful. Help us to stand strong. Help us to persevere. Father, I pray that you release a spirit of peace upon our hearts because, Lord, all of us feel the uncertainty of the times and we don't know what next week, month, or next year is going to bring us. Father, I ask that you replace fear with peace. Take away anxiety and release peace. Father, release hope. God, release the promises of your words to us that we have anchors to hold on to when we're being shaken. Father, we're being shaken right now. And Father, get, Lord, we just ask that you rise up in our defense. And that, Lord, when there's injustice happening against us, we just look to you to bring justice to the injustice. Father, we just look to you today. We're just, we release these prayers before your throne, knowing that these our prayers are like incense in heaven. And one day you're going to tip the bowl of incense on this nation for awakening, renewal, revival, and reformation. So, Lord, we look to you. We say, Lord, open up the heavens over this nation and come down in your power and goodness. God, bring a spirit of awakening, renewal, and revival. Father, I believe whatever chaos and whatever crisis the enemy is trying to stir up in our nation, I believe today you can turn that into revival. You can turn that into awakening. You can turn that into renewal. You can turn that into resurrection, life, and power. God, you have the ability to take the chaos and the confusion and turn it around for your good in Jesus' name. Father, we believe that today, and we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to keep praying for our nation, church. That's why we're in this series, We the People. If you, if you got your Bibles this morning, let's flip over to Luke 18, please. Um, I thought today I was going to do something different, but in, in the middle of the week, as I've been watching things unfold the, the way you are, my heart's been stirred, and my heart has been gripped. As I looked at we, last week, if you missed the message, you could go back. We talked about last week, we, we talked about um, the parable of the persistent widow. We talked about don't give up. You know, and, I, and the parable of the persistent widow is a perfect example of why we shouldn't be giving up. And I, and I felt like I was going to go on to something else. But as I was praying and, and reflecting, and, you know, I listened to other messages and from pastors across this nation and I try to stay uh, um, aware of what's happening and, and, and what the Lord is speaking to me I try to see if, if I hearing is my hearing in, line, in alignment with what others are hearing across different sectors of the body of Christ and as I was praying and just meditating and pondering I felt like the Lord saying you're, you're missing an important point in Luke 18 and I find it interesting that whenever you go to scripture you know maybe you've done this in your devotional time you read scripture and but sometimes the Lord wants you to go back and sometimes he gives you another angle on that passage and that's what I love about the word of God is that we could keep you know literally you could keep going back to that same passage week after week day after day and I believe the Holy Spirit can continue to give you fresh revelation on that passage and so today we're going to do that in this message the title of today's message is it's time to cry out last week the Lord is saying to us don't give up today he's saying to us it's time to cry out it's time to cry out you know I, I felt like the Lord saying that in my spirit this week and as he was speaking that to my heart remember Psalm 34 verse 17 Psalm 34 verse 17 says the righteous cry out the Lord hears them he delivers them from all their troubles. That, there's enough there. There's enough hope in that verse to get us through, church. The righteous cry out. The Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. This word cry in the Hebrew is like the sound of thunder. This word cry, it's coming from a group of people gathering together to seek God. The righteous cry out. It's a remnant. It's a group of people that are raising their voice together and it's like a sound of thunder. It's like a thunderbolt. Remember, we've been talking about the Lord's been showing us in this little mini-series. Prayer helps us hit the mark. 
Then we talked about the other week. Prayer helps us to hit the mark. Then prayer, like last week, the parable of the persistent widow, her prayers have the ability to give the enemy the black eye. Her persistent and prayer brought fear into the enemy to the point where the enemy says, look, look, lady, I'll give you what you want because I don't want you to hurt me. So when we pray, we're able to hit the mark that God wants us to hit. When we pray, we're able to put do significant damage to the enemy's kingdom. And today we're learning that when we cry out, when we cry out as a church, a remnant, the two or three that come together, it creates a thunderbolt in the heavenlies. Because when the righteous cry out that way, the Bible says the Lord hears us and he delivers us from all of our troubles. Do we really believe that today, church? Do you believe that when you pray, it could be like a thunderbolt that gets the attention of the Lord that would draw him into your situation to bring healing and deliverance? James 4.17 reminds us, if we're in trouble, we should pray. Our nation's in trouble right now, church. Our nation's in trouble. We should be praying. We should be praying in this season. And the Lord reminded me of last week's message. It says here, the widow cried out day and night. The Lord says, will not God bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Chosen ones in this passage or this verse means those that are called out by God, the elect or the remnant. These are the people that are chosen by God for special assignment to him. And guess what? There is no greater assignment than the call to pray. That is the special assignment of God. You don't need to be a pastor, a missionary, to do that. When you come in in the kingdom as a child of God, we're called in. We're chosen by God. We've been adopted and grafted in by God, and we all have that special assignment to pray, to call on God. Especially in these times. You see, God is waiting for his church to cry out because he doesn't want to put off justice but Luke 18, 8 says to see that we get it and that we get justice quickly. Could it be? Could it be that we're not seeing justice quickly because there's not enough people crying out at this time? There's not enough people crying out or raising their voice. And today, the Lord wanted to remind me of that. He gave me some revelation on this little verse. It says here, that uh, listen to what the unjust judge says and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night God is saying today he is not like the unjust judge in a way where he's going to keep putting you off no he say I'm a just judge and when you cry out to me when you raise your voice to me I will not only see that you get justice but I will see that you get it quickly why is this important? Because we have to understand that the woman in Luke 18, the woman in this parable, yes, she's a widow, but another description of this woman is a picture of the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ, and we have a bridegroom who's getting ready to come back. This widow is a picture of the church. It's a picture of the bride. It's, a, it's, it's, it's what Jesus is saying to his disciples. This is a demonstration of why you should pray and not give up. So this message isn't just singled out to the disciples. Jesus is speaking this message to us today because we are the bride and we are the church. Why is this significant? We have to understand the culture. And we need to understand the law of why her crying out is significant. Because let me tell you, I got four points. The first point, this woman cried out because she was a witness. This woman cried out because she was a witness. Let's look at it. Let's look at it in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. It says, if anyone sins... Because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. Why is this woman crying out? She's crying out today because according to the law, she is a witness. 
She is a witness. She says in this passage, grant me justice against my adversary. According to the law, she is supposed to cry out against the injustice. And because if she remained silent to it, she would be found guilty. You see, what is a witness? A witness testifies to what we experienced, to what we see and heard. She said, grant me justice against my adversary. We don't know what happened to her. We don't know what problem she's in, but we do know she lived in a town and she lived in a city and she was a witness to something that took place. And according to the law, if she remained silent, she would be guilty and held responsible. The point is this. Her silence is sin before God, according to the law. For her to remain silent and not to speak up against the injustice, according to the law, she's held responsible for what's taking place. That's why she cried out. She cried out because she had a responsibility. She realized that I'm a witness. I'm a witness to this. Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be what? To be my witnesses. The main reason why we have the power of the Holy Ghost Church is so that we could testify to what we experience, to what we see, to what we hear, because we, before God, are held responsible to be a witness. Your life is a witness. Your life is a testimony. And you have a choice to remain silent or to speak up. According to law, this woman realized, if I don't cry out about this injustice, then I'm going to be held responsible. So she cried out. And it gets a little deeper because she witnessed something that went against her. And, that's, and it kind of reminds us that when we're prayerless, when we're prayerless, it puts, it, God's going to hold us accountable for that if we remain prayerless. If the church remains prayerless during this crossroads that our nation is in, God's going to judge that. God's going to judge his church whether or not they remain silent or they spoke up. The second point this woman cried out because if she remained silent, she could actually perish and deliverance would come from another source. Where do you see that? Let's, let's look at it in Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Esther is a beautiful picture of God's redemption. And Esther gives us some clear guidelines on that. Let me just turn there quick. Esther chapter 4. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, she sent back this answer. He sent back. Mordecai sent this answer to Esther in, in Esther chapter 4, verse 13. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Mordecai was reminding Esther, look, Esther, God's placed you in a place of leadership for such a time as this. And if you don't speak up to the plot that's starting to happen for our people, not only will you and your family perish, deliverance will come from another way. That's why this woman in the parable of the persistent will kept crying out. It's because she realized something. She realized that she has a responsibility. Number one, she doesn't want to perish, and she doesn't want to see deliverance come from another way. And so Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Gather the people, all the Jews who are here in Susa, fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, that or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this, is a, when this is done, I'll go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. And so Esther was able to stand before the king. Previously in, in Esther 4, verse 8, Mordecai was received a copy in the text of the edict of, their, of, their, of his ancestors' annihilation, which had been published in Susa. 
to show Esther and explain it to her. And he, to and he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for the people. That's what this woman did. See, like Esther, this woman approached authority, knowing it was against the law. Why was it against the law? Because she's a widow. She had no standing in culture. She was the lowest on the totem pole. She, like Esther, could not just go up before a judge. This is risky for her. It was a bold act for her. She, something either happened to her or she witnessed some injustice in her town. And, and she needs to, because she's a witness... And because if she, if she remained silent, not only could something happen to her, something could happen to her people that she might be representing. So like Esther, she approached the authority knowing it was against the law. It was almost like this woman, this persistent widow is declaring, if I perish, I perish. If, if I have to go before this unjust judge and to plead my case, well, if I perish, I perish. But at least she says, look, I'm making a stand. I'm using my voice. Like Esther, she was put into a position for such a time to intercede and pray for justice. We don't know this in this text of Luke 18, but maybe she fasted like Esther before she approached this unjust judge. Maybe she realized that, that the odds are against her. And we don't know, but maybe she also fasted before she approached this unjust judge with her case. But also like Esther, we see in Luke 18, she was heard. And she received favor with the judge. And she got justice. Just like Mordecai encouraged Esther, it's time to beg for God for mercy and plead with him for our nation. Because if this woman didn't cry out, she would have perished. Number one, she would have perished spiritually because according to the law, she had a, a responsibility to not be silent. And if she, if she remained, if she didn't cry out, not only she would perish spiritually from a spiritual standpoint, she would also suffer from a physical standpoint because if she's going to suffer, that means she's with an unjust judge. She has an adversary against her. So, of course, if she doesn't speak up, the unjust judge or the adversary could do some harm to her as well. This woman cried out because if she remained silent, she could perish. And she knew deliverance would come from another place. Third point, this woman cried out because she knew she was marked by God, church. This woman cried out because she knew, even though according to law, if she remained silent, she could be judged and held responsible. And if she, didn't, if she remained silent, didn't go, she realized she could suffer or even die. But the risk was this. I believe in her heart, she knew when she cried out, she would be marked by God. Let's go to Ezekiel 9, 4 through 6. Ezekiel 9, 4 through 6. This is an interesting. Ezekiel 9. This is about God ready to bring judgment to idolatry. But here's what the Lord says in verse 3. The glory of the Lord of Israel went up from above the cherubim, the angels, where it had been. And it moved to the threshold of the temple, meaning because of the idolatry of Ezekiel's day, God is telling Ezekiel, look, dude, the glory is departing from the temple now. It's, gross sin has happened inside my kingdom, and, and now the glory that filled this temple is now getting ready to depart. That's what it said. That's what this means in this verse. But the Lord called to the man clothed in linen, and some commentators believe this is a pick type of Christ. The Lord called the man clothed in linen who had, writ who had the written kit at his side. And the Lord said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem. Put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are done in it. The woman who cried out figured, you know what, I'm marked. I'm lamenting. I'm praying. I'm in the city. God's about ready to release judgment. But God told this man clothed in linen to put a mark on the foreheads of those that are praying. 
Why? Because with judgment, it says here, as I listened, he said to others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old man, the young man, the women, the mothers and children, but do not, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Wow. Even in a time of God releasing judgment, those of us that decide, well, we're going to pray against the injustice. There's the, you know what? In our nation, there's a lot of detestable practices going on. Are we lamenting over them? Are we crying and grieving over the detestable practices of our nation? God is seeing and God is looking and God is marking those that are praying, grieving, and lamenting over this nation. Even if God has to bring a judgment to the nation, God is going to single out those that cry out to him. The woman standing before this unjust judge knew, I know I got to do what I got to do, and this is hard. But deep down inside, she probably felt, man, I'm marked by God. When I, when I cry out night and day for this injustice, she knows that she's marked by God. She knows that when she prays and when she doesn't give up church in the midst of the persecution, she knows that God is seeing her. She knows that God is marking her. And she knows that God will protect her. That's good news. It's good news for us in this season. It's time to cry out. It's time to cry out. It's not, we can't remain silent because God will hold us responsible for that. But as we cry out to the Lord in this season... We will be set aside and we'll be marked by the Lord. We have to continue to pray and not give up. Now, you can see how this is shedding a deeper revelation on Luke 18. That how important it is for us to cry out. And how important the message that Jesus is saying to his disciples. You must pray and not give up. You must pray and not give up. But there's a final point. And this one... This one is sobering but hopeful at the same time. Because, again, this may shed light on potentially what this woman was facing when Jesus was talking about this parable. The woman cried out because she had faith and hope in the law. See, we know that the law is holding her responsible if she's, not, if, she's, if she's not willing to speak up. But she's also hopeful in the law because she's crying out in faith. And, and she has hope and faith that God is going to help her and bring justice. You see, in Deuteronomy 22, verse 23, this is a really interesting Verse, couple verses. And it's very sobering what happens to the woman in these verses. It's even more sobering because what happens to the woman, she gets the same penalty as the guy who did it. But there's an important revelation to this and why we need to cry out. Here's the point if a man happens to meet in a town, a virgin pled to be, pledged to be buried, and he sleeps with her. You shall take both of them to the gate of the town and stone them to death. That's sobering. The injustice to this woman is very sobering. And here's the judgment. The young woman gets judged because she was in a town and did not call for help. She was violated. She, wasn't, she was in a sobering, difficult situation where she was abused. But because she did not scream for help, she was judged just like the guy who committed the act. Now we sit back and say, that's not fair. That's not fair. But the point, the point that this verse is making, church, is that when you... Is that is that city cities represent Zion in Scripture, and the reason why she was judged is because she remained silent. You see, if the law states if you're violated, you remain silent and don't cry out for help, you're guilty of sin. What if the woman in this parable happened to be violated by another man? What if this widow? We don't know why she's granting 
justice against her adversary. We don't know if this adversary do something to her that violated her or abused her in any way. We don't know. But I kind of ponder as I was looking at this, I kind of reminded of the woman who was caught in adultery. The woman caught in adultery was wrongfully set up. And Jesus stepped in and brought mercy. So, she's crying out night and day for justice against her adversary. She's standing before an unjust judge, and we don't know what happened between this woman and her adversary. But let's say, hypothetically, she was abused and violated like that passage we just read. See, according to the law, if a woman cries out in the city, if she would raise her voice, she would not be found guilty. Why is that important? Because when she raises her voice in the city, it gives an opportunity for help to come. When you don't raise your voice, you don't get help. When you're in a city where you're surrounded by men, and maybe, maybe her husband was the stones throw away, if she just would have raised her voice, help possibly could have came to her aid. But she remained silent. This woman, if she was violated in a way like that, she realized, you know what? I'm in pain and I'm in suffering and I gotta go in my town and stand before an unjust judge. She recognized that in the law. You know what? There's some hope for me because I'm in a town. I'm in this city and I yes, I'm a widow. I'm lowest on the totem pole. This woman in this parable, her only option for help was to cry out. She ran out of options church but she had one option left on the table I'm going to cry out I'm not just going to cry out once no 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 I'm going to go day and night and I'm going to cry out we don't know if that was weeks we don't know if that was months or years this woman decided my only option is to cry out and if I remain silent I'll be judged but this woman had an option to cry out grant me justice against my adversary she cried out this woman kept crying out day and night day and night grant me justice against my adversary how many of you are in a place like this woman right now how many of you like the only option you have left is to cry out to god you got that injustice of cancer you got that bad relationship you're dealing with your only option is to cry out to god grant me justice against my adversary this woman, if she was abused, she's crying out in pain. She's crying out in her suffering day and night. She's a widow. She is lowest on the totem pole in her culture. And she knows she's in an impossible position because she has to face an unjust judge and she has to face her adversary. She has no options. But she's going to cry out. She's in pain. She's in suffering. But she's praying and not giving up. You see this church? She's being persecuted. Her adversary persecuted her. She's not getting good treatment from the judge. But Jesus is saying, this is an example that you should pray and not give up. You know what? When things don't go your way, when you're in pain, when you're in suffering, when injustice is happening to you, your only option is to cry out. Because the law states, if you cry out in the city while you're being attacked, it gives an opportunity for help to come. This woman in her pain and suffering, in her lowly position, in an impossible position against an unlawful judge, an unlawful adversary, also you could throw Satan in that because adversary in this text in Luke 18 is a picture of Satan. So not only does she have to deal with the physical enemies, there's a spiritual enemy that she has to deal with too. But she's not stopped praying, church. She's day and night calling out, crying out. She prayed and she didn't give up. She kept crying out as long as she was in the city, crying out against the injustice. 
That's what will make her innocent. As long as she was in the city crying out, she knew her, she had faith and hope that her voice, that her crying out would reach out to someone who would rescue her, who would redeem her, who would deliver her, who would heal her and grant her mercy and grant her justice. Doesn't that give you hope to cry out, church? That, that, that you could cry out because she knew that, look, I'm a widow. I don't have a husband who's alive. But, you know, maybe if I cry out when I'm being treated this way, maybe there's somebody in this city that will hear my voice. But maybe she was recognizing if there's someone who's not physically in this city, I know a city in heaven, and I know a redeemer named Jesus, and I'm going to keep crying out because if no one in the city helps me, I got somebody in heaven that will. Come on. When the physical options run out, she had hope in a spiritual option called her Redeemer. This is good news. She prayed and she didn't give up. That's an encouragement to us. I feel like this is prophetic word for, for us at the times that God is saying it's time to speak up. It's time to speak up. The sobering part is it's time to speak up because if we don't, we're held accountable. That's sobering. But if we do speak up, we're marked and we're protected. As long as we keep praying and lamenting and, and, and praying over the detestable things of our land, we're protected and marked. We keep praying, even though the odds are stacked against us. As we raise our voice in a city, we know that there's someone that's going to hear our cries. We must pray and not give up. As a witness, what's our assignment? It's pretty simple. A witness cry, will cry out in prayer. Our, uh, uh, as a witness, our assignment is to cry out in praise. Psalms 8.2 says, Our praise silences the foe and the avenger. We are to cry out in tongues. This is a time to, 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 to use your spiritual language in this season. Cry out in tongues. It's a prayer that goes directly to the Lord. We need to cry out our testimonies. What has God done in your life? Share with others what God has done, the testimony of Jesus in your life, the salvation, the healings, the, you know, cry out your testimony. Why? Because we overcome, overcame by the blood of the lamb and by what? The word of our testimony. That's what helps us not to shrink back. It helps us to stand firm and strong. Finally, as an, our, our witness, it's our assignment to cry out the good news. It's to share the good news of the gospel, the simple gospel that Jesus came and Jesus died. Jesus rose from the dead for you to give you hope in the future. If we do those things as a witness, we will be positioned to do some great things as, as our nation unfolds. But the, most, the greatest priority of a witness is that we must pray and not give up today. Finally, Jesus says about the woman in his church, Will not God bring justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him night and day? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Justice comes to the ones who cry out. If we decide to cry out today, if we decide to raise our voice and not be silent, God says he will bring justice and quickly. You know what? We need quick justice right now. There's a lot of injustice happening in our nation. And I believe we could see justice serve quickly in our nation if we would just simply raise up our voices. You know, the first place to raise up our voices in prayer. That's the primary place. Our intercession, our prayer. We need to go to God first before we go to Facebook, social media, other places. Now, those are places to raise our voice. But we need to first raise our voice in our prayer closet. That, that's the most important place to lift up our voice. That's where we have the best influence on a world that does not know God is raising a voice. And guess what? It doesn't, you could be a witness that way. I mean, you're being a witness by you praying. So here's the good news. By you praying in your prayer closet, you're being, you're being a witness before God. You, you're, your voice is being heard and your voice isn't being silent. It's time to cry out, not to remain silent in this season. She had hope. She had hope and faith in God's promise. The righteous cry out 
The Lord hears them. The Lord delivers them from all their troubles. Some of you need to write that verse down and highlight it. That's an anchoring verse for you in this season. This woman in this parable is an example of a righteous person who cries out. She cried out. Why? Because she was not going to remain silent. She knew that the, her, she was up against the wall. She was facing impossible odds. But the righteous cry out. The Lord hears them and the Lord delivers them from their troubles. You could see this verse played out throughout the Gospels. The blind man called, cried out, and God healed him and delivered him. The woman caught in adultery cried out, and God forgave her sins. The righteous cry out. The lepers cried out, and God healed them. See, God brings healing and deliverance and to those that are willing to cry out. What I shared today in this passage, remember the last verse of Luke 18 says this, in verse 8, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? However, when the Son of Man comes, that's like when he comes, that's like the second coming, the return of Christ. When he comes, will he find that kind of, what that kind of faith is? Is there anything I said today? Everything in this passage shows us the, faith because our prayers and faith go hand in hand and Jesus is saying when I come back am I going to find people like this woman am I going to find people like this woman who who are in injustice who are in impossible situations and, and, and God's what kind of faith faith that says I'm going to pray and not give up when Jesus comes back is he going to see a church given up or is he going to see a church not given up Jesus is asking the question will I find that kind of faith when I come back Well, here's what keeps us from that kind of faith. There's two things. This is sobering too, because if we're going to have this kind of faith, I think the first thing we have to start with is repenting of the fear of speaking out. Do you realize that the number one fear, the number one phobia, is public speaking, church? <laughs> The number one fear people have is speaking out. Well, the Bible has another word for that. Do you know there's a fear that keeps you out of heaven? There is an excessive fear that can keep us out of heaven. And, and, and Jesus reminds us of that in the, in the final book, in the final chapter of the book of Revelation. It's one of those little hidden words that we kind of overlook. See, the fear of speaking out is really cowardly. It says in the book of Revelation that those are cowardly. Those that are given into an excessive fear. Or an easier definition is those that give up in persecution. That's what it means to be a coward, according to God. Is that when you're in a situation... When you remain silent, when you should speak up, you're being a coward. You're going to be held accountable. But more importantly, if you give up in times of persecution, that's what the Bible says of a definition of a coward. Why does Jesus say, Luke 18, 1, this is an example of that you should pray and not give up. Why? Because Jesus does not want his disciples to be cowards when persecution comes. He knows that something's going to happen to him on the cross, that everything that happens with the arrest and the crucifixion, he was preparing his disciples. Look, guys, I'm preparing you for what's coming. There's a persecution coming. Guys, you need to pray and not give up. Don't give in. Don't be cowards. Don't be cowards. There's going to be a time when you're going to have to speak up for me. You're going to have to share the good news. You're going to have to be a witness. You're going to have to speak up. So I think some of us, the reason why we don't have this kind of faith is some of us today need to repent of, of Lord, I'm, I'm sorry being a coward. I'm sorry for not speaking up when I should have. I mean, we need to repent of those things. But here's the good news. Acts chapter 4. See, that once we repent of the fear of speaking out, then we need to follow that up with this prayer. We need to follow it up with the prayer for boldness, church. 
we need to follow it up with Acts chapter 4 prayer. The second outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts was an outpouring of boldness. Because here's what happened. When Jesus was prophesying, it's almost like Jesus was prophesying to his disciples in Luke 18. He says, guys, I'm sharing you a story of what it's like to pray and not give up. That, that you're going to be going through a situation like this woman. You're going to be facing unjust kings. You're going to be facing unjust rulers. You're going to be facing adversaries. The question is, boys, are you going to give up or, or are you going to speak up? Jesus was preparing his disciples, prophesying to them, this story is preparing you so that you keep praying and not giving up because there's going to be a day when you're going to be just like that widow in that story. You're going to be standing before, you're going to be standing before physical enemies and there's going to be a spiritual enemy after you too. And when that happens, are you going to pray and not give up? Well, it happened in Acts chapter 4 and 3 just after the Holy Spirit was poured out Peter and John they were just on their way to church and they happened to lay hands on a guy they spoke to a guy he says this guy was crippled and they said silver and gold I have none in the name of Jesus get up and walk and this paralyzed man got healed and transformed and restored it caused such an uproar in the city people were amazed people were like whoa this is awesome and, but a certain group of people did not like what they did and so you read Acts 3 and 4 you see this is the first persecution against the disciples this is the first time after the outpouring of the Spirit when the disciples faced opposition they were facing it from the enemy spiritual enemy of course but this was the first biblical account of, of opposition from people and their response is everything. At this point, Peter and John, they, they testified and they talked about Jesus. They, they didn't remain silent. They, they stood up. They, they talked about, look, we didn't do anything but pray for this man. We just, we just said the name of Jesus and we spoke the name of Jesus and this guy got healed and, and they're trying to persecute them. They, they threw him in jail for that. But they did not remain silent. They, they're questioning, well, what power did you do this by? No, no, salvation comes from none other than Jesus himself. We didn't do anything. And all of a sudden, because they had courage and because they spoke up, here's what the people said. This is what the people said. When they saw courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. It was their courage to speak up, their courage not to remain silent, their courage in the middle of persecution. They, they, they were praying, but guess what? They weren't giving up, church. And because they weren't giving up, they had such a testimony on their accusers that says, wait a second, these, guys, these, are, just, these are just ordinary dudes. And, and then it goes on and they say, they called them in again and said, we don't want you to speak or teach it all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John said, look, what's right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? <laughs> you be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Demonstration of a witness. In the face of persecution, they did not remain silent. They spoke up, but they had the power of the Holy Spirit driving them. God gave them everything they needed to say while they were being jailed, while they were being questioned, while they were being accused and criticized, they, test, they came to the point of, look, you could tell us everything you want, but we can't help. We're going to keep speaking. <laughs> we're going to keep declaring. We're going to keep talking about Jesus. And then in Acts 4, they, re, they went back to the house. It says Peter and John, they went back to their own people. They reported everything that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Now, this is the response of the church in the house. These are a group of people wondering what happened to Peter and John. Are they coming back? Are they dead? Are they alive? No, they came back. The church is in a crossroads here, just like we are in this nation. Here's what they said. When they heard this testimony, they raised their voices in prayer. Their response was, we got to pray. We got to pray. 
And they said, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea, everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant and Father David. Why do nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up. The rulers band together against the Lord and is an anointed one. Doesn't that sound, that sound like this, the country we live in right now? Everyone is raging and plotting and scheming against God's people and the anointed one. Man, we're, we're, we're in the same place that these guys are. Then they, then they called out their leaders. And indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and, and the people of Israel of this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Then they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So their response to persecution, they did what Jesus says. They first, they prayed. And secondly, they decided we're not going to give up. We're, we're going to pray. We heard the testimony of Peter and John. So they prayed. They, they were calling on God. They, they knew that they, they were in some impossible situations. But then they decided, you know what? We're going to be, we're not going to give up. And this is how they handled it. They said, Lord, consider their threats. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders. Through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place that they were meeting was shaken. They all were filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word of God boldly. Church, this is what we need to do. We need to pray. We need to decide that we're not going to give up. And how do we do that? We ask God. Lord, consider their threats. Enable us as Living Hope Church to speak your word with great boldness, Lord. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Church, that's our response to this. If we're going to pray and not give up, we need to repent of our fear of speaking out. And we need to ask God to give us boldness today. That's why the Holy Spirit came, is to give us power, but he wanted to give us power to speak up and speak out. We can't speak up and speak out, church, apart from the Holy Spirit anyway. But when we ask God to come in that way, when we ask God for boldness and courage to stand up and to speak up, wow, God will answer that prayer. He will give you boldness. He will give you that courage. He'll give you courage to write that letter. He'll give you courage to send that text. He'll give you courage to make that phone call. He'll give you courage to talk to that person on the street. It does, it's, not, it's not your works anyway. It's his works through you. And that's how we're going to land this plane today. <laughs> Jesus is saying it's time to cry out. Last week he says, don't give up. Today he's saying, don't give up. It's time to cry out. Stand strong. Be strong. Next week, he says, I believe next week he's saying, we have, don't give up. Time to cry out. Next week, he's saying to us, it's time to stand up. It's time to stand up. It's time to stand up and be strong. When we don't give up, when we cry out, then sometimes we have to learn how to stand up and be strong like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and like Daniel. There's two examples in Scripture of what it means to stand up and be strong. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now for those online and in person. Father, thank you for encouraging us through this little verse. And Luke, thank you for allowing us to go back to this passage and, and, and discover that truth there that we got the mind today of how important it is to cry out, Father, first of all, forgive us. And write a pray with me right now. You know what? Maybe you need to pray with me today if you've been silent when you should have spoken up. You know, God, is a, God forgives and God redeems. So, you know, looking back, maybe the Holy Spirit is going to poke out your heart. So, you know what? Maybe there was a time when you know you should have spoke up about something and, and, and you didn't. You remained silent. 
the Lord's going to remind you of that. And just ask God to for, say, God, forgive me. And forgive me for not speaking up. And forgive me for not sharing that nugget. Forgive me for not praying with that coworker. And just, you know, take a moment. So, Father, we just ask you, God, forgive us today. Father, forgive us for remaining silent. Lord, your word shows us clear that that a witness, if a witness remains silent, we're held responsible. Lord, we don't want to be responsible today, but but we do ask you today to forgive us if if we decided to re, to remain silent. Lord, forgive us for those for those missed opportunities. Father, thank you that your mercy, your blood, and your grace covers that. Lord, remove the guilt. God, remove the shame and the condemnation regarding those situations. Remove that off of people today, in Jesus' name. And just pray with me. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for those times when, Lord, I just want to repent of the fear of speaking out. Lord, I know that the number one phobia is the, is the, is the fear of, of, of public speaking or speaking out. Lord, forgive me. Father, I don't want to be a coward. Father, I know that if you put me in a situation and I'm supposed to be your representative there and I'm not willing to stand up and I'm not willing to speak out, Lord, forgive me. Father, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to be bound to excessive fear and intimidation. Father, most of all, I want to pray and not give up. Father, I know we're living in times when things can get hard. Father, give me the strength to stand. I don't want to give up under persecution. Father, I want to be faithful. Father, I want to be faithful even if it, even if it costs my life. Just like Esther, she says, if I perish, I perish, Lord. Father, get us to a place to where we're in a win-win situation as a Christian. Father, if we have to go under persecution and our life is taken, the Lord, we, re we receive our eternal reward in heaven. And that is a blessing and that is our blessed hope. But Father, if we go through hard times, help us to be faithful in persecution. Father, help us not to give up. Lord, if we're faced with an option of serving you or serving a false God of this nation, may we, may we decide, no, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. And Father, forgive us for that today. Cleanse us. And we ask today, as, as we repent of this fear of speaking out, we ask that Acts 4. Father, we ask for boldness. Father, we come to you say, God, we don't know how to say or what to say. We want to pray. We don't want to give up. And Lord, we don't want to remain silent. But Lord, we all struggle with what to say. Lord, I know your word says that you're going to tell us what to say when we need to say it. But today, just like the early church prayed, Father, consider their threats. Enable us as a church today to speak your word with boldness. Ask God for boldness right now. God, ask God, say, Jesus, give me courage. Like Joshua 8, be strong and courageous. Meditate on this word day and night so that you will be strong and successful. Father, may we receive boldness today. Father, answer that prayer before us. We're asking you for boldness. We want to be like this woman in Luke 18. We want to be diligent when we're in impossible situations. We don't want to give up. We want to keep praying and we need that boldness. We need that encourage, that courage to stand before unjust people. And we need courage to stand before our adversaries. Father, give us courage and boldness today. Stretch out your hands and perform miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles today. In Jesus' name. Amen got a word of knowledge today i just i can't help i can't i can't close out the service without praying for this if you're watching online or in person and this is something that you know we have we have a couple ministries in our there's there's a ministry in our church called oasis and you could go to our website and set up an oasis appointment it's simply a prayer appointment we have trained people that will pray with you and some of you may need to do this because I cannot help, I cannot end the service out by not praying over a, over a situation. Maybe some of you today, when I read that passage in Deuteronomy about the woman that was, that was unlawfully violated, I want to pray over that because maybe some of you have been in those situations like that, whether you're a male or a female. Maybe you've been in situations where there's been some abuse, there's been some injustice. And I want to pray over that right now. And, and I want to pray over that. But some of you, if, if it's a very big deal, I just want you to know at Living Hope Church, we have Oasis Ministries. You could go to our website and fill out uh, an information card. And that gets emailed so that we could set up an appointment 
so that you could get healing and deliverance. So I, I just wanted to make that mention today. We have a great team of people, and you could go to our website, livinghopechurchmora.com, and you know what? Even if you're online, you know, we, we have the ability to pray with you on the phone too. So, so whether it's in person or online, we want to connect with you. We want to pray you through victory and healing and, and, and that. So I just want to, I just felt like today, maybe someone online or here today is dealing with that. And, and maybe today that scripture that was read brought something to the surface today. And, and God is saying, I want to heal that. I want to heal that. Someone reached out to me last night. I was praying and preparing and just finalizing this message. And someone messaged me on Facebook with a situation that was like that. So I felt that was a divine appointment from the Lord. And can't wait to pray with this person and, and, and help them find freedom and healing. Even in my preparation of this message, God brought somebody that needed healing. And what God did for them, he wants to do for you today. So if you're dealing with that, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to put my hand on my heart. I'm going to pray over this situation. I'm going to pray over this because God wants to heal you from that. God wants to heal you from any injustice that was done that way. Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray for those online or in person right now that have, that have dealt with any form of, of injustice, abuse, whether it's relational between husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, um, parent, child, or, you know, anything like that, Lord. I just, first, I break the spirit of trauma off of those. I break the trauma, the things they saw, the things they heard, the things they experienced. I break that spirit of trauma off of that injustice. Father, I just pray that that spirit of trauma be broken off these individuals, broken off their eyes and ears and their bodies so that they don't have any memory of what they saw or heard or experienced. God, remove that trauma now in the name of Jesus. God, release healing. Malachi 4, rise up over these people and these individuals and release healing upon their bodies. Radiate the heat and power of your presence. Holy Spirit, come and begin to heal and restore those wounds. More importantly, the emotional and the soul wounds that happen from that. God, bring healing to those wounds. Lord, bind those wounds up and bring healing there. Bring healing to any physical pain in Jesus' name. And those of you that are dealing with this, here's the next step for your healing, and, and you need to do this. And I'm going to lead you into a simple prayer. You could write it down to pray it later, or you could pray it with me. But you know, forgiveness and trust are not the same things. Forgiveness releases healing, but it doesn't mean you trust. So many people don't forgive because they don't trust. And, that, and, and because you think that way, you lose out on a healing. So you need to forgive. Forgiveness doesn't mean you have to trust. Trust is like step-by-step -step building blocks. Reconciliation, that takes time. You, just because you were hurt and violated, you need, to, you need to forgive that person so healing can come. Because Jesus says, if you don't forgive, then I can't bring healing. But it doesn't mean that you have to trust because you have to put up boundaries to protect yourself as you heal. And, and God may choose to restore that relationship or not. That's up to the Lord and his timing. But what you have to do and this is going to be painful, is you need to forgive that person that violated you. And this is how we do it. We say, dear Jesus, I forgive. I forgive. And you fill in the blank. I forgive who hurt me. I grant them a free pardon of forgiveness in Jesus' name. Father, I forgive them. Father, just like you prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Father, I release this person. Everything they took from me, I take back today. Lord, restore my innocence. And Father, everything I took from them, I just give it back. And Father, I forgive this person who hurt me. I ask that you work in their life. I ask that you bring them to Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I now break soul ties cut the soul ties of that person. And so, Father, so I could just release that person completely into your arms today. In Jesus' name. That's a simple prayer, but very powerful. It, 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 it brings healing, and I know it could bring up some emotion in your heart. But now the healing, Lord, let the healing come. As they've prayed that prayer, let the healing come to that wound. Let the healing come to the mind and the soul and the spirit. 
God, release healing and restoration there. Lord, help them to put boundaries up. Lord, if, if those individuals are still alive. And Father, as we broke soul ties, now the access is broken. So now begin to build a boundary line around these individuals so they could heal and be restored. So that, and Lord, protect them and, and just keep them protected. Lord, surround these individuals like a wall of fire that your glory rests within them today. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you need more prayer on that, you could contact the church or you can go to our website and, and set up an Oasis prayer appointment. We would love to pray you through some of this so that you get healing and deliverance. As we close today, thank you for joining us online, in person. If you haven't had a chance to give today, we have a, a slide that shows you how you could do that. One of the things we are highlighting right now, the Lord put it on our hearts and our community to bless our school teachers with lunch this week. And uh, we have a push pay called School Lunch. You can also put school lunch on an offering envelope. We want to encourage you to give a little over and above this week to help us reach our schools. Um, they're going through a hard time as they're trying to adjust to another um, learning module. And, you know, it, this has been a hard year for our teachers. And we're praying for them. And, and, you know, as we're praying for them and as they're encouraging them, sometimes a little practical thing can bring, um, can kind of boost the morale a little bit. And we felt like the Lord putting it on our heart just to, just to practically um, bless them with the lunch. And, and um, we partnered with a local restaurant so that we have it all set up so the teachers can go and, and get a lunch this week because a lot of them have to work extra hours to get the modules up so that we could get our kids back to school. So if, if you could help us out with that, that would be great. I know the, we, we did this at the start of COVID. We got so many emails from teachers and tears saying, thank you for this. This was such a blessing to our family. And I mean, just the love. And then other people in the community found out what we did and other communities members started pitching in and doing some things too so we just want to wrap our arms around our city during this hard time and and then stay tuned to our Facebook page and and, and also our website on, on upcoming events that are happening thank you for taking time to worship with with us today blessings to you from our house to yours and uh, stay in tune with what God's doing this week and also online this week I'll, I plan on going online a couple times this week to pray with you for your needs and so and to share some thoughts throughout the week as God is encouraging us so thank you so much take care Lord bless <laughs>